Firebrand Table Talk. <clears throat> what we have to do is we have to walk in the authority and the power that Yeshua gave us. And uh, we're not going to get to the book of Acts tonight, but go back to Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. And he says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample. Watch this. Behold, I give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Some of us are so frozen in fear that we can't get outside that car. We can't get outside that house. We can't step out on that porch just to greet the mailman and see if the mail lady or the mailman's been saved. We just can't do it. We're just frozen in fear. And God wants us to move outside that, knowing that he's given us all the authority of heaven is behind us. When you're sharing the message of the gospel and you're walking in holiness with the Lord, he's given you all the power of the Godhead. We don't realize who we are in Christ to the point of knowing that God has clothed himself inside of us in the form of his son. So the power of the resurrected Christ is alive in you. And Paul said he counted all things rubbish that he had accumulated in his life, that he might know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And oh boy, did he begin to know him. <clears throat> but how did he begin to know him? In perils and beatings in the sea a day and a night. <laughs> Stoned twice. Resurrected from the stoning. How did, how did those that were before us come to such a point of pl and a place of faith? They were eyewitnesses. You know what Christ wants you to be? An eyewitness of his goodness. So don't tell me I need to do away with the old covenant, that it's obsolete in the sense that God told me to remember this, to tell it to my children for every generation from here forward. Don't tell me that I need to lose sight of this and that I'm not a part of the remnant, that I haven't been grafted in. Okay? I understand the seed of Christ and I understand the seed of Belial. Okay? But don't tell me I need to do away with this. What I need to do mm. is I need to teach my children this. And as I'm teaching them this and as we're going and, and in our prayer journal and in our daily journals that we're writing, we're writing about the things we're asking God to do and we're recording right. this and we're sharing these things. And so our children are not just getting something that Elijah did mm. or Elisha did or Moses did or Abraham did, but right. they're getting what you their mothers and their daddies are doing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What America needs, as well as the whole world, is more disciples. That's right. And the disciple that doesn't have the Father's heart doesn't know the love of Christ. Amen. Because the love of Christ is the Father's heart. A mother that doesn't know Christ in the way that he wants them to know him doesn't know the Father. Mm. It's all going back to that relational tie with the Father. I see. Hallelujah. Oh and you know what he says? He says, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. What did he tell us we were going to be walking on? Mm. Did he tell us we was going to be walking on rose petals? No. Did he t what did he tell us we was going to be walking on? Serpents and scorpions. scorpions. And he said he gives us all power over all the power of the enemy okay so he gives us he, he gives us the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Damn. notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven now, i've seen a lot of people get haughty because they cast out a demon I've seen a lot of people get really excited about seeing the move of God. There's nothing wrong with getting the anticipation going, the exciting uh, factor going about being just absolutely on fire and zeal. The, the zealots were, were known in his day too. And there's nothing wrong with having zeal for God. But you know what? That same zeal that I had when I got saved, mm -hmm. I want that kind of fervor to be burnt inside of me to where I'm not going around on an emotional high like a lot of people have been for a long period of time. I want you to come out of that emotional playground that you've been playing with and playing in. And I want you to let the supernatural, as you call it, I call it the divine nature of God to overshadow you and overpresence, overpresence, overpower you with His presence. Yeah. The overpresence of God, the That's overpresence right. of That's God right. is Christ That's right. in you. Amen. And if you really know love, you know that love is based on your commitment to Him. That's right. If you do not love Christ more than anything else on this earth, you don't know what love is. Mm. You've never experienced love until you love Him with everything that's inside of you. Wow. And out of that overflowing abundance of Him flowing through you, 
you can love people the way he wants you to love them. It's not a condemning spirit. You know, we love John 3.16, but we need to get 3.17 in there. Yeah. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Right. But that the world through him might be saved. Say it well. See, there's a there's a thing that's happening now as judgment has begun at the house of God. the Lord. Yeah. You're the house of the Lord. You're the temple of the living God. So when things are not right in our temple, mm -hmm. when we're not right in our relationship Shoot. with the Father, we can't minister the way we need to minister. Oh my. Listen, there's a lot of people that, that need your help. Mm. You know, I've been crying out for, for years and years and years about the bane of sexual immorality in our country. Mm hmm Okay, I don't, you know, you can take that TV and throw it in the lake that's behind my house. The only thing I'd miss it for is watching some videos that bring up the greatest teachings about our Savior, our Master, that have ever been produced. That'd be the only thing I'd miss is being able to see it on a larger screen. Yeah. Okay? I don't get my news from any news network on the television. History, My right? children knew within an hour of the Russians flying their MiGs armed with nuclear warheads, missiles, in, over the airspace of Guam. My children knew within an hour. The world's just now finding out. It's not news there. It's history. Right. If you want to know something, get to know the Holy Spirit. Because he said, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not of. Sure. He said, I will show you. John 16, 13, he said, I'll show you things to come. It's not about a superstar. Though there is a superstar. Right. His name is Yeshua. Right. This thing about setting somebody on a pedestal, you know, mm. it, it shouldn't be that way. We should come together and encourage one another and strengthen one another yeah. and and tell each other and show each other how we got to this place in God. How we discovered this abundance of pure gold. That's His presence. Not make a big deal about how we produced a miracle. You can't produce a miracle. That's the Holy Ghost. I know the heart of God's got to be grieved at what He's seen and how His people have been robbed and stolen from. Mm. And still today. If you're not feeding from this and your relationship with Him, oh, wow. if you don't have anything flowing out of here, mm. and you're just picking up something and sharing it from somebody else, you don't have anything that He's given you that you want to share, Fine. you're not sharing. Mm. You're not sharing. Jesus. You're just giving something somebody else has got. Mm. Mm. God wants us to give out of the abundance of His love that He pours through us. Through yes. our relationship with Yeshua. That's good. Hallelujah. Don't worry about them judging you. They're going to judge you. They're going to condemn you. They're going to send you on your merry way. They've already decided what punishment you're going to get. But your punishment has nothing to do with what they're thinking. Mm. You're not appointed unto wrath. You're appointed unto God's gracious mercy. It's hard to praise God when somebody says something bad about you. Mm. And they do all kinds of evil against you. But why don't you try it one time? Oh dear. Or why don't you try releasing that person as I was speaking with my friend today. You're holding on to something that somebody did that was bad. But it's hurting you because you're holding on to it. Oh, why would you let someone else's sin corrupt you why would you hold that person's rotten flesh next to yours so you can rot that's what a cadaver is right how many people in the body are walking cadavers mm. is there nothing new coming out from the throne room of course there is you have got to get to your place in god that's in good. christ that's good to where he's flowing out of you. Mm -hmm. If Listen, he says, if you go up a little bit in, in verse 16, he says, he who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent Thank you. me. Oh my. Okay. So you, you have to understand that they're not rejecting you. You've got to get outside yourself. Yeah, I was talking with a gentleman today and he says, uh, he had read something that somebody had written and, and oh, he was just absolutely sure that this was something that was meant 
uh, in a harmful way. And I just started laughing because many times I've said some things and, and, and been talking to some other people and people took them the wrong way. And you know what I told him? You know, most of the time when I read something and, and, and I'm thinking that this is a, you know what I do? I stop and I say, God, what are you trying to show me? Because mm. if you've got a problem with something somebody else is saying, nine times out of 10, God's trying to say something to you. Oh, wow. 9.999999. With the repeat and remainder on there. Ooh. He's trying to say something to us. You know, this other person told me, he says, you know, if you can recognize it, you probably got it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> See, you want to know why the spirit, the, the wonderful gift of discerning of spirits is, is not more relevant and, and, and flowing in the body? It's because most people can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Because... When you see something in somebody, it's not for you to judge them and send them on their way to the fiery flames of eternal mm-hmm. damnation. Mm-hmm. But God will show you something, and He wants you to pray for them. Okay? Sometimes He'll tell you to privately talk to them. Oh my. He'll give you a word for you to privately talk to them. See, God's long-suffering, and it's His kindness that leads us to repentance. We can't hate people into salvation. Mm. Is there accountability? Absolutely. Is there responsibility? Absolutely. Has there been? No. There mm. hasn't been. Mm. There's been. There's always a cause and effect, but there's been no consequences mm. for a lot of people sin. Mm. And because of that, mm. the love of many has grown cold. You know why? They're judging. Mm. <laughs> God's not interested in you feeding 100 million people. As much as he is interested in feeding you. Because mm-hmm. when you begin to eat the living bread. Mm. Then the living waters. Will begin to flow up out of your belly. Jesus. See bread. Causes. So. We mm. call it salivation. Mm-hmm. See. When you begin to drink the wine that he puts before you. And take of his cup. Yeah. You begin to learn of him. And he's meek and lowly in heart. He wasn't looking for a great big promotion. Mm. Some people are trying to make the big score. Make it big. Hit it just right. I've got some good news for you tonight. Mm. You already made it. Praise if you God. know Yeshua, you made it. You made the big score. You made heaven. Thank you, Jesus. There's no greater prize than to know the Savior and the power of his resurrection. There's no greater treasure, no greater treasure than to have that pearl of great price shining through your life. That's Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many today have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. What's that mean? Well, they're in the religious duties. You know, they go to church because it's the right thing to do. Mm. Have they prayed for anybody in the last 50 years to get healed? Probably never. Mm. But you know what God says? He said in His Word. We just read it. He said in your Word. He said in His Word for you to go. Yes, He did. He told them on the day of Pentecost to wait until they were endued with power from on high. That's right. That power wasn't to raise them up on a platform so that they could get millions of dollars Mm. and ride around in Rolls Royces. Oh, I'm dear. sorry, brother from Louisiana. Oh, dear, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I, I'm glad you got a Rolls Royce. But I just wonder how many starving children I could feed with that thing if I sold it. If you gave it to me, I, I promise you, I'd never drive it. I'd sell it instantly. Mm. And I'd give it to those that need it. <laughs> 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 but I'll tell you one thing. Elijah... In a whirlwind inside a chariot of fire. <laughs> he experienced more in that moment than you'll ever gain from driving your Rolls Royce, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. <laughs> now look at what he endured. Did he endure some things? Absolutely. He endured a lot of things. God's moving us to a place of engagement as the kingdom possessors. And it's not with a haughty spirit, it's with a humble spirit. Mm -hmm. He tells us in the book of James, which we're not going to get to tonight, he tells us to resist the enemy and he'll flee from us. Mm. Who's your enemy? Is it Mm. those of your own household? Mm. 
You know, sometimes I'm praying under my breath when I'm talking to people I'm related to. I'm praying under my breath that God will keep my tongue. Mm -mm. And I get off the phone and I go cry before him. And I pour my heart out before him. And I say, thank you, Father, for helping me keep my tongue and not join in and not say nothing negative and not, not, not scourge anybody. Father, thank you, Father. Psalm 141, verse 3. You know what that says, Anna? Set a guard, O Lord, Lord, over my, my mouth. Lips. Keep watch over the door of my lips. I can't believe it. They tell you to talk louder. Wow. Isn't that something? <laughs> That's pretty good. Cool. Isn't that something? That's awesome. But as God begins to flow out of us, we can't get to the point to where we think it's now all about us. And we can't allow the journey to get us so busy in what we call our ministry, which we never have. It's not ours, it's His ministry. And if we get so busy that we forsake that first love, which is our time with Him, then we have defeated the whole purpose. Oh my. Glory to God. Oh my. Do you go after your son if he's lost? God goes after his sons. That's what he's doing today. That's what he's doing tonight. I don't know who's watching this has been away from God, but I know this. I know this message is a message to you. Just as I saw the tears in the gentleman when I stopped in the middle of the aisle in the front of the registers in Lowe's and took him by the hand and prayed out loud in public for him. Amen. Church without walls. Bring it on. Why? Because he was hurting because he lost his way. His focus was on this world and the things that are perishing. His focus was on the hurt. His focus was on the bruise. God is able to bruise, but He's able to heal. Bind up that wound. Why don't you let Him bind up that wounded heart of yours tonight, friend, that's been away for a long time? Jesus. Why don't you come back to the one Bless him, Lord. that called you into His marvelous Bless life? Bless Him, Jesus. Bless him. If you'd gone so far that you couldn't get back, you wouldn't have been thinking about whether or not you had. Mm -mm. These are just truths. These are just facts. Mm -hmm. I am sick of the enemy going into God's camp yeah. and tearing down the lives of his children and destroying them. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of hearing about somebody say they're a Christian and blowing their brains out. So what mm -hmm. I want to do about it, Jesus. I want to share the real love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring it on. I want to share the real love of Jesus. If you've lost someone. Mm -hmm. That's committed suicide. Oh dear Jesus. I want you to just thank Yeshua for being the caretaker over their soul right now. But more than that, I want you to forgive what you think you're holding on to. And look at the amount of punishment. Look at the amount that he bore. The punishment that was placed upon him was for your sins and my sins. Mm. I want you to look at what he endured. Mm -hmm. What he suffered. That we might have fellowship. Mm. with the loving Father. I want you to think about what all He endured and forget what about you've gone through. And I want you to understand that what we've gone through, we bring a lot of it on ourselves. Mm. He says that we're supposed to tear down the works of darkness. A little bit of light dispels all the darkness. You can take a candle in a room and it lights the whole room. Just a little bit of light yeah. lights the whole room. When are you going to learn that the light in you is to dispel the darkness? He has called you and I to tear down the works, totally destroy the works of darkness. Mm. You know how you do that? Decreeing and declaring His Word, speaking His Word, going forth by faith. Jesus, Moving under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He said that the Holy Ghost came in like a wrecking ball and tore down the middle wall of separation. That partition that was between us, God ran into when Christ died on the cross. He said, now you can come into the Holy of Holies. Now you can come in and get all the power you need. Now you can come in and get all that you need to make you whole. And you can take it out and make as many as will receive. Make them whole. Mm. We talk about a great commission. You talk about a timely matter in which you're living. These are awesome days in which we're living. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. He's going to do just the opposite in your life of what's happening in those, those lives that don't yeah. know Him. Amen. Say it well. He's going to bring you to a place. Yes. Just like He did the Samaritan woman. Mm. 
to the well. To the well. Mm. And he's going to give you an opportunity. If that well's dry, that you've been drinking from right now, if that well's run dry, will you dig a new cistern? Mm. Will you dig a new well? And will you dig it Mm. where the living waters never run out? Mm. What's that mean? Well, I'll tell you what that means. That means you fall on your face before God Mm. and repent. Ask Him to forgive you. And ask Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, to come into your heart and to fill you and to give you of these living waters just like the lady at the well did yeah. in John yeah. chapter 4. Praise God. Those living waters that are flowing out of you, other people are drinking of. When you're full of His love and you're full of His Spirit, you're full of His power, you may not know all those that are benefiting from what you're doing for Him, but I guarantee you there's somebody that's nursing and there's somebody else that's at your table cutting the meat that you prepared for them. No, we may not all be at the same place, Hmm. but we're growing into that same place. It's time to get busy. Yes. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's time to break open mm-hmm. and start eating the meat of the word. That's good. It's time to take up our responsibility. That's good. And be accountable under the whole. It's time to let our voices be heard. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm. There's none of this. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't affect me. That's 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 not accountability and responsibility. No, it's it's time to stand up and say, God. Set a loving parameter around us. Yeah. And as long as we stay inside that loving parameter that God set up, we can receive of His greatest blessings. That's right. This is what He told us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Mm. Friends, these are serious times. Yes. These are very serious times in which we live. Oh, Jesus. Almost on a daily basis, we see people that, that have great needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you prepared to go out into eternity tonight? I hear the Holy Spirit. You might be in a hurry, but don't touch that dial. Mm -hmm. Don't you leave this broadcast. Mm. You might think you've got somewhere else more important to go, but you don't. The peace, the peace of Christ that passes all understanding is all in Him. Yeah. There's nothing that can satisfy you. That's right. i got one more comment I want to make to JW. And Jesus saith unto them, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Mm. He might have had a money bag, but he had some few faithful women to minister daily to his needs. His focus wasn't money. Jesus wasn't a rich man. He didn't come to the earth to be rich. He gave up his riches, Brother JW. Mm. Well, I want you to know that if he'd have been what you said he was, and some others, you're not the only one. But if he'd have been this man of great wealth like you're talking about, he wouldn't have been staying in caves and spending the night in gardens and on the mountaintops. Mm. He would have got him a room at the local inn. Mm. 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 He would have got all his disciples a room too. Mm. But he spent a lot of time mm. in some cold, damp places. He did. He did. And what he did is he didn't focus on what he didn't have. Mm. He focused on what he had been given. Mm. It's called an attitude of gratitude. It's true. And since we don't know much about suffering, (laughs) since we've been given so many gifts from him, we know very little about suffering. I want to challenge you, friend. If you've never spent 24 hours fasting before Christ, I want to challenge you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you strength and help you fast. Just 24 hours. Just the, This first fast, just 24 hours. Mm. goes by real fast. Just fast 24 hours. And ask God to show you what it is in your life that He wants you to get rid of. Mm. And what it is from heaven that He's trying to bestow upon you. And then I want you to understand that whatever He brings into your life from heaven it's not your gift. Mm. It's His gift. Mm, that's good. It's His gift. Even the gift of eternal life is from the Father. Mm-hmm. He's not a mean tyrant, but He is a God of justice. 
stand up for truth, be about mercy, mm -hmm. love righteousness, and hate iniquity. Mm. Stand in your guard in holiness before Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Do everything that's within your power to please Him. That's right. And then you will know as He puts His seal of approval upon you that you've done all you can do. That's right. And then you'll know your calling. See, a lot of people struggle. Am I doing the right thing? Do I know I'm doing the right thing? But He tells you that you can know that you're going the right direction. You can know that you're moving in the right step. Mm -hmm. Because He gives you that peace and He That's tells right. you that. Right. It was funny. I was trying to find something this morning. The Holy Spirit said, why didn't you just ask me? Hmm. As soon as I asked him, it, it was there. And I was chuckling. Hmm. I, I wouldn't take nothing for the intimacy of knowing the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I wouldn't hmm. take nothing for that. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Paul many times prayed. Peter many times prayed. John many times prayed. These guys prayed. Wow. They prayed and they were directed into where to go. And even when it meant he was going to be in prison and eventually killed, mm. he went to Jerusalem. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit told him to go. That's right. He wasn't afraid of his life unto death. Mm -mm. Let's don't focus on the things that are going on around us. Let's let's lose our focus of things that are perishing, as Second Corinthians chapter four says. Mm. And let's move towards Mount Zion. That's good. The city of the great king. And let's keep looking under the hills because our help is on the way. Amen. Amen. That's let's good. Let's don't get sidetracked. And let's understand that the anointing that he gave, mm -hmm. he's still giving. Because right. it says that it is unto this generation and every generation that follows. That's good, Dad. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're going to take one part out, take it all out. Mm. If you're going to say one part's obsolete, do away with all of it. Mm. But I caution you, he says, don't take away from any of it. Yeah. I want you to be very sincere when you pray, but not get up under a spirit of religion. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that prayer is not always talking and pre presenting petitions, but it's also listening. Amen. Communication with the Father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Communication? Is that just talking or is that talking and listening? Mm. Good communicators are great listeners. Mm. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Chatting. Are chatting. you a great listener? <laughs> are you a great listener? You know, sometimes I go back and I, I, I hear something from the Holy Spirit and I write it down and I go back and I read it and I say, Wow, that was powerful. You know, I just I just start to rejoice. I just start laughing. I start saying, that is so powerful. That is so powerful. My energy doesn't come from a snack drink. That's good. That's or, good. Say it well. Or a caffeine-enriched drink. My, my strength and my energy, it comes from the joy of the Lord. It's on the inside of me. Amen. That's good. Dad. Hallelujah. Good work. I see people. That greet me sometimes, and I promise you, it looks like their face would break like glass if they smiled. I see so much hatred and bitterness, and I just keep smiling. Hallelujah. And sometimes I have people say, Smiley, what are you so happy about? Mm. Oh, it's just wonderful when you run into somebody and they say, Hey, Smiley, what are you so happy about? So you have to be ready. To share with anybody that asks you That's right. why you, like the apostles and disciples of old, mm -hmm. like the patriarchs of old, why you have such confidence in what you believe in. Well, that takes it to a whole new level, doesn't it, friend? Because unless you develop that personal relationship, unless you've experienced something from him, I know faith is not tested, has no right to be saying that it's been proven. See, it's the faith that's tested that proves God works. That's good. You know what a friend of mine told me this afternoon? Oh, my goodness. Prayer really works. i got to keep on doing it, brother. <laughs> 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 As he cried in joy. That's awesome. See, see when, when you pray for something and you fast for something and God grants your petition and fulfills it according to your faith, I don't think there's greater joy than someone that would die for someone else. Someone that's praying and fasting for someone else. Oh, well. And then God does what you're asking 
for that person. I don't think there's any greater joy in the one that stood in the gap, if you will, for the other person. Well said. But Jesus said there's no greater love than one lay down his life for his friend. That's laying down your life for your friend. Oh, well. And even if your friend doesn't appreciate it or doesn't know about it, God sees. That's good. And God knows. That's good, dude. We have to be about the Father's business. That's what Christ was concerned about is the Father's business. That's good. Notes, they're written. Sometimes they're delivered and sometimes they're not. Sometimes you get to speak what He gives you. Sometimes you don't. Mm. But always remember that what He wants you to speak is more important than what you thought you should have said. That's good, Dad. Hallelujah. Know that the divine appointments that are coming into your life are arranged by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You're not just running into these people and talking to these people by some happen chance or stance. Right. It wasn't by luck. But know for sure that the divine appointments, I'm talking about people that he's bringing into your life, the new doors and the new channels of communication that he's opening up from the Holy Spirit. Know for sure that God's bringing them into your life. That's good. I pray over all of you. I pray that God keeps every door closed that he doesn't want you to go through because when he closes it, nobody can open it. And I pray that you walk through only the doors that God would open unto you so that the richness of his presence can be seen by everyone that you talk to and share with. Oh, that's good. Even those that don't know the Messiah know something's different about you when you're walking in His love and in His presence. Mm. He's such a good God, and He loves us. He hadn't bid us farewell and dumped us out in chaos. He's the one that brought order out of the chaos. That's what He does with a broken life. If you've never experienced Christ, bow your head, repent of your sins, and ask Him to come into your life and come into your heart and fill you with His love and His presence. It's okay. You can cry. You can pour your heart out to the one that knows you best and loves you most. I love you more, but He loves you most. Nobody mm -hmm. can love us more than the Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, friends for being faithful in serving That's in right. every capacity that God has called you to serve in and to share in. Praise the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit and Christ the Son. God bless you. Amen. Until next week. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor Dave. And uh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Join us tomorrow morning, social media prayer time, right on this Freecast channel. God bless you. Have a great Friday night and a uh, big pot of coffee. Just waiting. That's not true. You didn't make coffee. Well, it's about to be made. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was like, you didn't make coffee? Man, you had a full house. That was awesome. Tina, Donna, Mike, Nora, Rebecca. Uh, about three different guests in and out. Your Wait, mom was there in the beginning. Uh,